My name is John Tolson, and I'm a volunteer tour guide with the Chicago Architecture Foundation. I've lived half my life here in the city of Chicago, and I've always been amazed by the architecture that is all around here. When you walk through the streets, there's just so much energy and life, and a lot of it is when you look up and see these incredible giant buildings that are surrounding you. The model behind us is uh, a part of an exhibit called Chicago Model City, and it's uh, really a terrific way to see all the different buildings in the city of Chicago. Uh, most people, when they think of Chicago and Chicago architecture, think about the fantastic skyline that we have here in the city, and really, I mean, it's an incredible skyline, it's breathtaking, but the skyline is really just a collection of buildings that are great architecture. Chicago's newest super tall building is the Trump Tower. It's part of the trend that is uh, going on right now in skyscraper design, where you have these very tall, thin, elegant buildings, multi-use. In this case, it's uh, a hotel, condominium, and a restaurant. The building is very dramatically situated, and it's so tall, and it's right there on the river. And at 92 stories, it's the tallest building that's been built uh, in the United States since the Sears Tower was completed 35 years ago in 1974. Marina City was designed by Bertram Goldberg in 1964, and uh, most people affectionately call them the corn cob buildings, and they do indeed look like corn cobs there standing on the Chicago River. The building is is great in part because it actually was designed to uh, be interactive with the river. The if you have your little motor boat, you can scoot along the river and then pull it right into the. A boat parking lot underneath the marina towers. Get off there, you can go to your apartment, go to the restaurants, the stores in there, whatever you want to do. The John Hancock Building was completed in the 1960s, late 1960s, and uh, a lot of people call this building Big John, and it's one of the favorites of the super tall buildings. And part of the reason is because it has these girders, these cross girders that go across it, and they really accentuate um, its modernist profile. And it really is just, you know, such a great exemplar of uh, the modernist style, but done on this immense scale. 333 Wacker is actually one of the favorite buildings of people in the city of Chicago. It's uh, unusual because it's curved and it uh, meets the bend in the river and curves along with it. And it's covered in this great green glass. Uh, it was designed in the early 1980s, and it really is the transitional point from the uh, stark, um, modernist buildings of Mies and others in the 50s, 60s, and 70s into sort of a, a more whimsical style of building that came along in the 80s and 90s with postmodernism. The old historic water tower, most people um, see it because it's down in the prime shopping area of North Michigan Avenue. Uh, it survived the great fire of uh, 1871, probably the one event in the history of Chicago that most people know. And it's down in this great little plaza. It's a nice place uh, to uh, stop and take a break from all the activity that's happening in North Michigan Avenue. The Daily Center has some of the longest distances between columns of any building in the world. And when you look at this building, it might look like it's rusting. Uh, and in fact, it is rusting a little bit. That's because the building is covered with Corten steel. And Corten steel rusts on the outside so that it protects what's on the inside. The Harold Washington Library uh, it was designed to look like an old building. Uh, when you look at it, if you ignore the top of it at least, it uh, looks like an old Chicago brick building and some of the design elements were uh, taken from other buildings around the city, but it was actually completed in 1991 and certainly when you look at that extravagantly ornate top, um, that can show you that it couldn't have been built uh, 100 years ago like you might think. Well, Crown Hall was designed by Mies van der Rohe, one of the world's most famous architects. Crown Hall is at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, it's a 1950s gem of a building, and many people uh, consider it one of the world's greatest buildings. Um, it's probably a great uh, example of Mises' uh, famous saying, less is more, because when you see this building, um, it's really just a perfect form. Undoubtedly, Franklin Wright is the most famous architect from the Chicago area and probably the most famous architect uh, from the United States of all time. Franklin Wright practiced in and around the Chicago area for about 25 years in the decade before and after 1900, and he perfected his prairie style here in the Chicago area. If you're in the city, it's not hard to get to Oak Park, which is probably one of the places that most people um, associate closely with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, 
You can see his incredible home and studio there, as well as the renowned Unity Temple and many other homes that he designed in Oak Park. The Inland Steel Building is a fantastic building. It was completed in the uh, late 1950s, 1957, and it's considered one of the most uh, elegant and graceful modernist buildings. It was one of the first buildings built within the downtown of Chicago after World War II. And prior to that, people were used to seeing buildings built from 1920 and earlier, covered in stone and terracotta and brick. And then all of a sudden, you have this glass and steel structure. The Merchandise Mart, you can't miss it. Uh, it's a huge building. It's one of the largest civilian buildings uh, in the world. It's a great example of the Art Deco style um, that was built uh, in 1930s when this building was completed. And it's really this stark uh, limestone with uh, linear um, different types of decorative elements and metallic on it. And uh, you can't help but be overpowered. The Michigan Avenue Bridge is really one of the great urban vistas in the whole United States. Uh, it's where Michigan Avenue, one of the city's great streets, meets the river. And a couple of uh, the city's most interesting and uh, well-known buildings are right at this intersection. And the Tribune Tower uh, is one of those buildings. It was completed in the 1920s. And it is uh, a huge neo-Gothic structure um, and is quite striking. Another building at the Michigan Avenue Bridge view is the Wrigley Building. And the Wrigley Building was completed in the 1920s and it really doesn't have a specific style. It's more an eclectic building. Um, you know, a lot of people call it a confection or a wedding cake because it's covered in this incredible um, glazed white terracotta. There was just a new addition completed to the Art Institute of Chicago. It's known as the Modern Wing. And uh, it's been one of the most uh, critically acclaimed new architectural buildings in the United States, and it's really quite impressive. And uh, it's almost like it's a piece of art that holds art inside it. The Willis Tower, known to most people as the Sears Tower, it recently changed its name, uh, is the tallest building in the United States, and for uh, almost 35 years, one of the tallest buildings, or the tallest building in the world. Um, it's 110 stories high. Uh, over 1,400 feet or over 442 meters, and it's still the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. The observation deck on the 103rd floor gives you a great view of the city, and they've added something new to it, which uh, is hard to uh, match anywhere else, and that is these bump-out ledges. They um, uh, extend from the building, and you step on them, and you get to look down through clear plexiglass, and uh, you have a quite startling view of uh, what's below you, and really an incredible experience that uh, you can't get most other places. The Marquette Building was completed in 1895, and when you go into the lobby, which you do on one of the Chicago Architecture Foundation's historic walking tours, you really get to see um, and can't miss the dramatic Tiffany mosaic that's inside. The mosaic depicts some of the scenes from the life of Father Marquette, who the building is named after. And Father Marquette was one of the original team of explorers that discovered the site, which is now Chicago, in the late 17th century. The Palmer House was completed in 1927 and really is one of the uh, city's nicest uh, old hotels. And when you go into the lobby, you cannot miss the over-the-top ceiling. And you see it covered with its uh, neoclassical detailing uh, and multicolored uh, decoration. Really give you a sense of the, what the 1920s lifestyle would have been like in one of these grand old hotels. It's a great place to sit and relax at the end of your day exploring architecture in the city of Chicago, have a drink and stare up at one of the greatest ceilings uh, anywhere you're going to find in the world. And the Chicago Architecture Foundation is an organization that uh, helps the public experience architecture here in the city of Chicago. And we do it through a lot of different ways, uh, one of which is tours. All of our tours are led by volunteers like myself. And the tours are walking tours, uh, many of which leave from this building, the Santa Fe building. Um, but we also have bus tours, uh, as well as our uh, famous river cruise. One of the best things about coming to Chicago is exploring the architecture further and seeing the buildings that make up that skyline. Uh, Chicago is a fantastic place to see all different types of architecture. Um, probably, I think, more than any place in the world, you get the best collection of architecture from the past 150 years.